Yeah, no, I know, but you know what? We gotta, we gotta stay safe, man. Every man cool. is out there. <laughs> so it's, 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 uh, go it's never gonna end, I feel like, you know? Oh my God. If it, it is, uh, if we can get people vaccinated, we have a fighting chance. How about that? So it's New Haven Doc Film Festival time. That's Woo-hoo! right. Once more, the eighth year in a row we've been is doing it. Is it? And yeah, never, you're not tired yet. You still uh, I'm, I'm exhausted. It. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I want a nap that starts today and lasts last for about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when is the film? When is the film festival this year? What's the date? Okay. Um, well, I'm going to start with just real quick tonight because to sort of like shake off the cobwebs, we're doing a free screening of my pizza movie. Oh, that's right. Out. I saw. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. So that's just that's just a freebie. It's like come at eight thirty. You can order pizza from Sally's. You can watch the movie. You can meet the filmmakers. Me and Colin and Dean will all be there. It'll just be fun. And it's sort of like, hey, let's make sure the projectors still work. Things like that, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> and where are you doing it at? Sally's. Oh, okay. right under right under the tent. So it, nice. It, it, yeah, beautiful night for it. Um, but then, but the real festival starts next Tuesday night. Cafe Nine. We just have one screening again. It's sort of that starts slowly, and and it's uh it's actually a sneak preview of my new music documentary about uh, Jay Bennett, who was a a guitarist in a famous alt country band named Wilco, and yes. he sort of got kicked out of the band, and then while the band went on to riches, he died. <laughs> so because he couldn't afford health insurance, and but he was really heavily responsible for the band's most famous records and i just felt his story needed to be told so uh we're gonna be showing a work work in progress so i'm sort of gonna turn the question and answers on the audience to ask them what worked it's, this is the first group of people that are seeing this film so oh, great great oh this is great i yeah, love so that, this the end also afterwards we're going to be doing a musical tribute a lot of local uh, well-known local musicians are going to be playing the songs of Jay Bennett and Wilco afterwards. Did you know Jay Bennett at all? No, I honestly did not. I mean, I'd seen Wilco with him numerous times back in the late 90s, uh, but did not, no. Um, okay. Wish yeah. I did, wish I did. Okay. Um, but then the real festival starts at 11 a.m. at the library, Wednesday morning. The public and- library on the green? Correct. Uh, yep. Uh, the uh, the Ives Library right there on the corner of Elman Temple. Mm-hmm. And we've got a number of, we got two rooms in the library. So we got movies playing all day long, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, that's cool. And, and they're even staying open late just for us. Um, and Wednesday night, our big official opening night uh, is back at Sally's under the tent. And we're showing this really cool movie called Vinyl Nation about collecting records. Oh, and um, you know, that's a whole universe, this vinyl oh, record collecting people. Absolutely. I had no absolutely. idea how big this was until I, I caught wind of, like, I think there's a big um, um, fair kind of thing here somewhere in Connecticut. I want to say, like, Norwalk or somewhere, and they host it, and people go, it's lines. and. Oh, yeah, it's, like, it's a record convention. Basically, yeah. And you can just go. I mean, I think vinyl is just coming back because especially, especially during the pandemic, because we were stuck home, something to <laughs> listen to, you know. Um, and and the thing is, I mean, I don't mean to sound like a snob. It does sound better. It's, oh, I, I agree. I, you know, I just bought a record player a couple of years ago and started going to the, the record shop, uh, Elm mm-hmm. Records in, in over there on Fountain in Westville. Right, right. And, you know, and just been buying records, you know, one or two records here and there particularly ones of my youth. Uh, and you're right. There's nothing quite like it. Even though I have all these CDs, there's nothing quite like. And, and you know what is like, like, cause I think probably both of us, we sit in front of a computer all day long. Yeah. And my doctor always says, you got to get up and move around. If yeah. you put a record on, you got to get up in 20 minutes to turn it over. You're so right it about that. It gets you away from the computer. <laughs> so I feel vinyl is good for our health. All right. Oh, I like that. Okay. Um, Final was good for our health. I love that. So tell and, me about the festivals. Tell me about some of the things that, that you're excited about. Now, thank okay, you for, well, for, there, for letting me see a particular film that I'm excited to talk well, about. Well, I was just going to say, that brings us to Thursday night and a film that you're going to be moderating called When Claude Got Shot, which really is... I think a brilliant look at gun violence in today's society. And I think it's yeah. a film that 
I think it's a film that everyone should see. And in a town like New Haven, which does have so many divides, as we've talked about in previous times, I think it's, it's especially uh, irrelevant for a town like New Haven. Yeah. I, I think what, what, I, what I find most, what I found most engaging about the film is how it didn't just stop with a sentence. It came full circle with a re- almost like a redemptive peacemaking mm-hmm. component to it. And I thought, that's that's the world I want to live in. Like I want to live in that kind of a world where people are that way. You and you're I mean? and you're going to be there interviewing Claude and uh, uh, hopefully a few other people's. We should talk I, I'm about. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about maybe getting seeing if we could get some people from the police department or the city to also come down. Okay, well that's you know? just that's just sending them an invitation. That's like, yo, you might want to come check this out. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also on Thursday night, we've got. Three very different things going on Thursday night. We've got that. We've got five funny films, five funny women at Cafe Nine. <laughs> These kind of like really fun, light, wacky short films, and then followed by Haley Copes, who is uh, been working with the festival for years, and she's been doing a lot of stand up comedy recently. She's brought on five uh, herself and four other uh, female comics to do some stand-up so that's going to be a fun probably probably r-rated night is my guess uh <clears throat> to say the least and then over at saint paul and saint john's episcopal church on the corner of olive and grove we have a film called for the left hand which tells the story of uh, norman malone who was um as a young man was beaten by his father so badly he lost the use of his right hand but he loved piano and he taught wow. himself how to play with just one hand. And he got so good, but he never really played publicly. And in his seventies, he did his first recital and Whoa. The, it, the town of Chicago, where he was from, the, the, the a reporter discovered this and just went nuts as, you know, as to how good he was. So not only are we showing this amazing film about him, he's going to be here to play afterwards. Really? Yeah. 70 years old. Really? In his seventies, yep, yep. Wow. Um, for, uh, and again, remember. Plus, we've got all these films all day long. I mean, there's so many films. It's it's. We have over a hundred films, so it's impossible to talk about all of them. I mean, do you do you? I mean, Gorman, do you cap this? I mean, do you? I mean, are there films that you're saying no to? Like, films oh God, yeah. Who oh don't get God. into the festival? <laughs> oh God, yes, yes, yes. You you would not want to hear the uh, the notes on some of the films. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, do you do you say you know what? There are certain things that we just won't we just won't show um, for whatever reason. We just won't show it. I won't show a badly made film. If mm-hmm. someone was, I mean, and none came, but I mean, if someone was to come up with a film that says Donald Trump's the greatest president of all time, but it was a well made film that made its points, even though I would disagree with it completely. As long as the film is well made, I will still play it. Okay. The problem is so many of the films are just, you have great subjects, really bad filmmaking. That's, okay. that's the issue we run across a lot. And do you say that to people when, they, when, you, when you decline their film? Do you say, I mean, what do you say to them? Like, I usually just the... say, unfortunately, it doesn't fit into our programming this year. If they ask for, a few people have asked for, you know, comments. And I, I will try to give them the comments from uh, the, the, the the jurors that, that review all the films. But it's it's kind of hard when sometimes on a scale of 1 to 10, you have five people watching the film and the rating is under 2. Uh, that's not a real good sign. Okay. 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 Yeah, definitely. We had, a, we had a number of films. I, I believe I counted we had 14 films rated under 2. Which means, oh. that, yeah, those there. Some, I mean, every once in a while, you get films that are just painful to watch. So, no, what we show is like the cream of the crop. Okay, okay. Plus, I go out. Yeah, we, we have a lot of films from Sundance, South by Southwest, Tribeca. Okay. I go to the. So we know those are amazing if they come from there. Yeah, I raid. I raid the best film festivals <laughs> around the country and and bring their stuff here. So, so, I mean, do people get it? Are there prizes to be had? Like, do you do that? Is there prizes to this thing? Yeah, we, yeah, we actually, at the end, usually uh, on Sunday at some point, and I think we're going to do it, we're showing two films on Sunday at Cafe Nine in the afternoon. Um, 
One is called A Sexplanation, which looks at sex education in this country throughout the past, like, century. Really funny, really dirty, but a a well-made film. And the other is this documentary on a woman named Karen Dalton, who is a not well-known folk singer from the 60s, but she was Bob Dylan's favorite singer. Has a voice like Billie Holiday, but she can play guitar like, you know, the, 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 the most amazing shredder you can you can think of uh, just mm-hmm. just a, a great musician but had a very hard life beautiful film about her we're probably going to do our award ceremony and give out uh, prizes to the audience on that that day we always give out things like you know gifts from gift certificates from willoughby's and modern and uh bottles of wine things like that okay okay all right so so every year, do you do you uh, do you pick your own favorites? Like, are there oh some yeah, favorites yeah, we, we actually for you? because we're in New Haven, we started it last year. We give out the Golden Slice Award, <laughs> and and one of these days you we're going to have someone guy, design us. Oh, well, you know, you know, me being pizza. Come on, that's a that's a whole other. <laughs> that's that's like a five hour conversation something. Um, but yeah, so we give out the Golden Slice Award. Oh, okay, okay. So, so now, the, is that is the, 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 the Golden Slice hold your personal picks? Uh, it's it's uh, it's mine and Catherine who runs the festival with me. It's our it's our favorite films. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I will All say right. this year, we have a tie for best short, and the best feature was a runaway choice. So, but those will yeah. be announced on Sunday. Okay. So the festival runs from when to when? Uh, it runs from next Tuesday, August tenth. Right through to Sunday the fifteenth. Oh, okay, that's a good amount of time, and yeah. people can just go to the library. Everything is free. No, everything's free at the library. You still need tickets, though. You got to go to nhdocs.org. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. you still need tickets, okay. and some people think you can also, if you the, at the library, you can get it for free. We have a suggested donation. Um, some of the t- the tickets with the music events are more pricey. Like another one, we're doing a, a, a film on Friday night. 13th, Friday the 13th, again at St. Paul's, and we're doing it in conjunction with um, the New Haven Symphony Orchestra and Yale's um, Institute of Sacred Music. It's called Organ Stops, and it's about a man who saves um, pipe organs from churches in England when the churches are being torn down. And okay. um, we're going to have a performance on the, the pipe organ, this beautiful pipe organ in the church, and also with a, a, a trumpet player from the symphony. So it should be a, a beautiful night of classical music. Um, oh, nice. We also have, uh, on Saturday night, um, Compassion Fest, who is the, which is the big vegetarian vegan festival, which hasn't been able to run for two years because of COVID. We're presenting a film called Stork Man, which is an absolutely astounding film about a man who rescues this stork that gets shot in the wing and and literally takes care of the stork for 25 years building it a thing on his roof the stork has a mate that flies south every summer the town gets so obsessed with this stork that people literally wait on the streets for the mate to come back from the south every summer so they can mate again it is it is just a beautiful movie about living with nature um absolutely stunning movie it, it'll it'll will make you laugh it'll make you cry a little bit but it's beautiful and wow. that's that's free admission i think it's just a suggested donation of or two bucks or something and we have vegan food trucks and everything and then the other big thing we're doing we're bringing back a guest of honor this year oh. and for so many years uh you know hollywood's been talking about you know the year of the woman and so forth well when you talk about really important feminist female filmmakers beth b who started as a punk filmmaker in the 70s in new york she was right big with that underground new york movement with spike lee and jim jarmusch and all those guys uh and she has made just an amazing number of films and we're showing three of her older films on saturday at the library and sunday night our closing film is her new film on lydia lunch it was just profiled front Mm. page of new york times Mm -hmm. she's another punk poet from the late 70s early 80s from new york and lydia is going to be performing at cafe nine after oh, the screening. wow yeah oh, so yeah, i mean we have a, a we have a crazy lineup considering we're coming out of this pandemic i mean you know what this, this festival feels different every year 
It just feels different every year. It's because you never know what films you're going to get. It's a lot of it is based around what films you get. I reached out to Beth last year because we did have a couple of venues and I said, and she wasn't ready at that point to do a live screening. So this year I've got her to come up. So she'll be here for those three films on Saturday and the Lydia lunch on, uh, on Sunday at cafe nine. So you, you don't, I mean, at this point, eight years in, you don't have to do too much heavy lifting to get people to send you films. No, no, we just put it up on film freeway and people, people send it in. But I still, like I said, you know, it's like, there are so many film festivals, uh, not a lot in Connecticut, but um, it there are still a lot of film festivals out there. So we, I still, like I said, raid the. I, I'll write the people at the bigger, uh, the bigger festivals. Like, but but this year, a film that reached out to me, we don't deserve dogs. Beautiful film about dogs, and you know that I'm also a big dog fan. I'm as big a dog fan as I'm a pizza fan. And <laughs> what we're doing is we're showing it at the library on Friday at five o'clock but all week long at the library we're taking donations um for the uh friends in the new hateman animal shelter yeah so you don't have to pay for the ticket but bring a bag of dog food for that film or or you know cans of cat food anything that the shelter could use and i think it's you know it's a good cause you'll feel good you'll love the film and if you love animals and you have kids saturday morning we have uh, Guinea Pig Diaries, which is about people and their guinea pigs. And it is just an adorable film. 11 o'clock in the morning. Bring your kids. It's, you know, it's, it's completely oh, that's safe. Sweet. Yep. That's at the yep. library, too. So everything's at the library except for the other except for the other venues. Yeah, we got a couple of venues, but the majority, about, I'd say about two-thirds of the film are at the library. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the student competition. That's online. We, we also have, now remember, another 20 films online. So um, you can buy you can buy tickets to those individually, or you can buy a pass that so you can watch all of them. Uh, another some great films online. There are a couple of films that are both online and live. Uh, we have our student competition. We have a couple of workshops, including one on raising money for your film oh, and okay. on, on doing animation. So, oh, that's important because I, I mean, I, I, you know, I think the pandemic has has made a lot of um, budding filmmakers. I, at least I think so. Well, it's we, we actually did this year. Last year, we did a competition called, uh, uh, you know, li about life in quarantine for, for younger students. <laughs> this year, we did the new normal. And, and so, in other words, what is your new normal or what's the new normal for your favorite restaurant? I mean, how did this affect everything? Mm -hmm. You know, next year, we're going to do like, how did you survive the third surge? You know, <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. So do you do you intend to have themes for these film festivals, or it just depends on just how the films show up? Yeah, it, it, that's really what it is. Last year, I could not find a music film to play. This year, we must have gotten twenty of them. Oh wow! Yeah, it's which is why we have so many of them. Um, so it, it varies every year. But I'm surprised this year there's very few political films. There's like nothing really about politics. I think people are exhausted. That, that, that could very well be. But, I, but usually an election, I'm maybe it'll be next year that uh, we'll get the films about the election. Okay. 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 And so um, um, were there any films that absolutely broke your heart? Um, well, broke my heart. Um, I, I honestly would say dork man in a way because it, it, it it's that it's 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 a beautiful film and it broke my heart in a way that it's like i wished i had made this film okay you know, it's just beautiful it's just beautiful um i we i honestly feel that you know not nah, breaking not this year there's nothing that like had me sobbing or anything mm -hmm. um it's more about a lot of films that taught me things I think a lot of films, something like when Claude got shot, that really put important subject matters in a very intelligent light and gave us different points of views and different ways of looking at things. Um, the same thing, uh, we don't deserve dogs. I mean, it really just goes around the world and the different, different people in different cultures and how they treat and react with dogs in society. Uh, and again, being a huge dog fan, um, the Lydia lunch is just like one of those 
if you don't know who she is, you need to know who she is. Uh, and she is just such a smart, sarcastic, funny woman, you know, that you'll just be like, you'll become a fan of Lydia Lunch. You know, you mm-hmm. might not agree with everything. You're, there might be times she says something that makes you want to cringe, but the next minute she's your best friend again. So was there any films that sort of made you feel like, oh, I never thought about that or, oh, this is, this is quite thought provoking. I, I had no idea. Do you know what I mean? Uh, well, um, there, uh, there's one film online, which, uh, let me get the, yeah, I, again, so many films. I want to make sure I get uh, the name correct. I'm pretty sure it's called Witness Underground, but I want to make sure of that. Witness Underground, which it looks at Jehovah Witnesses oh. in Minneapolis. Uh, that's just online. And we're going to be doing a Q&A, not only with the online with the director, but with a couple of the people in the film. Um, I, I think there's a really, there's a fun, shorter film. It's only like 45 minutes. Do you remember the movie with Warren Beatty and Dustin Hoffman called Ishtar? Yes, massive. Yeah, it, was like a, it was like the worst movie ever made, or something. <laughs> well, this is a film about a guy who goes to rent it at his library, and the list is thirty weeks long to wait for this movie. So he starts becoming obsessed with who else is on this list, and it's called <laughs> "Waiting for Ishtar." It is just, it is funny. Yeah, um, there's a really wonderful film. Um, called At the Ready about a number of ki- a number of Mexican immigrant kids who live on, in a border town in Texas who are basically training to be border agents. So that they basically their job will be arresting people from their own country coming into our country. So, and it's a really and, and these are all teenagers and it's a really interesting look at. It's a different take on the issue at the border. Let's put it that way. Wow. Um, uh, one of my favorites is called Clown Planet, about this group of clowns that goes into <laughs> war areas to, in, to entertain the kids, like into oh. Palestine and into Afghanistan. And I, 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 kind, of, I kind of loved it, and I, I sort of loved the message behind it. It's That's like, a little dangerous, isn't it? Very dangerous, and, but I, I think it's, it's a great example that, like, you know, the power of laughter. Um, film called Rebel Dykes about a bunch of <laughs> lesbians in the 80s and it's just it's well done it's as naughty as hell but um, I, I it, it'll definitely keep you riveted to the screen so now so Gorman do you watch every single film that comes through no yeah. I, I, I okay. there's just too many I watch as many as I can but I've got a large group of uh people watching so you know it and we we all we all sort of champion films that we all sort of love you know like like uh for example like cassandra because i cassandra's been with us now for about five years she always picks the strangest movies but people always seem to really love the movies she picks so i go if she says i really want to see it and everyone else hated the film i let we put it in because cassandra wanted it (laughs) <laughs> so now do you get feedback on the festival like how do you how do you how do you know um if people enjoy these films or how do you well, know? i mean i i you know i'm is as i as i always say to all the volunteers you will see me at every venue every minute of the day i basically am everywhere at the festival so people find me and obviously I, i'm probably the person that people know from the festival so i'm always hearing feedback um i i i get emails online but the same big thing is is that people keep coming back yes you know and the donations go up i mean people could be buying tickets you know for you know whatever it would let, let's say the 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 event at um at St. Paul's Church, uh, organ stops. I mean, tickets are $25, but you can give a donation. People have been buying tickets for $100. So oh, okay. that that's like, I think, a great, I mean, if people are giving you money to keep your festival going, that that's pretty much a good sign. Yes. You're doing that's something right. Sign. Especially in, sign. especially in this economy. Wow. Wow. So, um, so when the festival ends, when do you get geared up? Do you take some time off? Uh, no, we start. Uh, we have our meeting, you know, on uh, August sixteenth, nine o'clock. No, really. 
<laughs> we start talking about it immediately. We really do. I'm really? I'm, a, I'm a workaholic. Like last year, last year we didn't, and and everyone said you know because it was like it was such a grueling thing because of dealing with really COVID was much worse, obviously, and we didn't have the vaccine or anything, and we so we didn't have a meeting the next day. What did I do? I ended up editing all day long. I I was just, I could not. I was on such a roll, I couldn't take a day off. I'm really wow. bad. I'm bad with that. I have to go on vacation, get away from the computer to take a day off. All right, so are you working? I mean, I know you're working on the Wilco film because it's yep. not finished, but you're going to let us It'll see be finished. Uh, it, the world premieres in Chicago in uh, November. Okay. So, so it, are, it, are you already working on your next project? Oh, we have we have five or six going right now. Oh my God, you yeah. are a workaholic. Yeah, we have uh, we we uh, back in June we started shooting seniors too, um, about uh, senior dogs. Uh, we have a, we're doing a film, or obviously the factory film, which is uh, yes. we, we're still shooting on that because again everything got pushed off because of the pandemic. Uh, we're doing a film on Holy Land and Waterbury. Um, we are working on a film on a, bu- a, a sub- the, the topic of uh, bullying in schools in Minneapolis, and um, trying to think that you know there are a couple others that we're just starting with, which I'm not really talking about yet, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. soon enough. Ah, oh, the life of a filmmaker. So, um, so you, so you, ha- you're working nonstop. So, are you going to take some time off? What are you going to do? Like, well, I know, we- I know your wife is like, uh, you need to take some time off. Well, but the thing is, we were planning on going down south in October. We always take a vacation in October. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen now. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? I'm so excited about this film festival. Every year I look forward to it. I catch a couple of the films. Um, and uh, and I'm very excited this year because I got to see um, Clark got shot. And, um, and I really went into it with the... I was thinking, oh, is this going to be one of these kind of films where I'm going to be like... But I found it to be quite redemptive. Quite redemptive. And, uh, I was like, I, I like the way that this film... I like the direction that it headed in. Mm-hmm. And the way mm-hmm. it I'm re- and I'm, I, I really am glad you're part of the festival this year. Thank you. I'm happy to be a part of it. Particularly around this particular issue. So, um, um, But it was just a beautifully... I just, liked, I just liked everybody in this film. Even the young man. I like, mm-hmm. I was, you know, because I, I saw my sons in him. I saw, I mean, I just saw young people. I, he looks like young people I know. Um, um, and to see him mature through this process, you know. And I'd be interested in hearing how their relationship is going, if they're still connected to one another. Right. Claude right. And, and the young man. You know, I mean, so, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a different look at a subject that affects us all at this point. Yeah. You know? I, I think it takes a great deal of. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even know how people sort of rise above their own pain to look deeper into somebody else's story because that's what Claude does. You know, right, he, right. He doesn't accept just, you know, I got shot and blah blah blah. He's like, no, no, I want to know about this. I want to know about this person. I want to know, you know, for whatever the reasons he wanted to know, he came away very different. Well, you know, I think that it's, I, well, I mean, first off, yeah, I mean, that's what makes it a good film is because you ha- you don't have someone who's just angry all the time and right. you know, seething that, you know, that what happens sort of sets him on a different path in his life. And, and yeah, I, yeah, I mean, that I, but I think that, again, that's what made it a great film. That was one of our highest rated films. Yeah, I, I could see how it would be because it, it was... I mean, it was just beautiful. I mean, it just had a lot of layers to it that spoke to me, you know, as a as a as a black woman, as a you know, as a a city dweller, as a person with sons, and you know, and now we're seeing all this violence now, you know, re, you know, this return to shootings and stuff like that. I mean, it just it's such a timely film that resonates, but not in a boys in the hood kind of way. No, I mean? no, and it's also it's not preachy. Right, right. You no, know, right. which is look. I mean, so many times. That's another bad thing. Sometimes with documentaries, is people think of documentaries as you know, people telling you, "Oh, this is what you got to do," and that's not the way you make a good documentary. To me, it's like you need to tell a story that captivates and entertains a little bit, and still at the end, you walk away going, "I even learned something from that." 
Yeah. And that's a that's a successful documentary. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think you're absolutely right. But well, I'm excited about this film festival, Gorman. I'm glad that you could make some time to come on this morning to talk to me about this uh, because everybody's buzzing about the festival. Everybody likes the festival. Um, and maybe next year we'll be in a better place where we can all gather more. That would be great. <laughs> and uh, no ma- maybe no masks even. Here I thought, we were, <laughs> here I thought mask-free, and now I, we had the meeting Sunday night, and I said, I don't want to be the grouchy old dad, but uh, we're all wearing masks, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Got to. I mean, that's just, we got to, we got to, uh, as uh, my, my, my last guest, Dr. Brown, said, do you want to remember the pandemic, or do you want to be remembered? That's a good line. That is a very good line. So I'm like, I think I'd like to just remember the pandemic. (laughs) And and, and well, the thing is, hopefully we don't just remember it. As a society, we learn from it. I hope so. But, but, you know, America doesn't do well with remembering (laughs) and lessons learned. Yep. Yep. So we'll we'll see. I I bet you it'll be next year when you do this, you'll have more extended kind of pandemic kinds of films. I bet you. I'm sure. The problem is we did have a bunch of pandemic films this year, but they were really bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. uh, um, Really bad. Uh, You know, like, <laughs> I'm not, it's like the, if I just if I showed you one day what one of the really horrible films was, you'd be like, "Oh my god!" Someone watches this whole thing, you'd you'd be like mortified as to how bad sometimes they can be. <laughs> like someone needs to take this person's camera away for life. <laughs> oh my god! So so one last question before you go. So so this is eight years. In two years, it'll be ten. Do you do something? Because it's 10 years, like, do you do some special thing? Do you revisit the very first films ever shown? Like, what do I you do? Know. Like, we I mean, I know it's yet. far long to think about, but I just yeah. want to put that on your table. Uh, it, it's something, it, it's, been, it's in the back of my mind, it's popped in there, you know. I don't know, maybe we'll open our own theater for our 10th anniversary. Ah. New Haven needs a movie theater. Oh, my God. It's like, do we not? Especially a cool little one. It's just something small showing, like, you know, offbeat films, yes. you know. Yes. Yes. That used to be, you know, when, when I would go on Broadway. York Square. All those York Square. And now Absolutely. he's in Brantford. You know, he runs the Brantford, you know, the, I mean, uh, Guilford. Do you remember uh, the Little Theater on? Yes. Uh, oh, my God. That one was great. They'd show all the old movies. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. I, no, I mean, we, we need that. But I mean, yeah. For But for now, hopefully we fill somewhat of a void. And again, it's nhdocs.org. Yes, in hdocs.org. So, yes, yeah, so I want everybody who's listening and everybody is listening to go online, register, get you some tickets, maybe buy some tickets to the, to the other venues and see these really, really amazing films from people all over the place talking about all manner of things. I mean, you'll come away feeling like you've got a slice of the world, right? Even if you didn't leave home. Right, right. And there are, there are really like, you know, even the short films, Queen of Basketball is about the first woman basketball player drafted by the male NBA. Uh, NBA. Oh, I know who that is. Great. I, I know, and I think I know the filmmakers on that. Well, maybe you do. It's, it is a wonderful movie. Um, yeah. Sophie and the Baron, another short film about a young art, a female artist who works with the, uh, one of the most famous rock photographers of all time. Like, if you think of a picture of Dylan, this guy probably took it, or Jimi Hendrix or Jerry Garcia. Um, Subjects of Beauty, which is about black women and, you know, basically it, it's, it's, a, it's an African-American version of what society puts upon us as to how we're supposed to look. Mm-hmm. And really, that's, that's showing at the library. In fact, and that's showing with Beauty President, President, which is about the first gay man, cross-dressing gay man who ran for president against Bill Clinton. Whoa! Yeah. Okay. Who is also African American? Okay. Um, but okay. I know I what I'm so. doing there. And and literally, the library. Anyone who wants to go to a movie at the library, go online. You can get a free ticket, but just get a ticket because uh-huh. we only have fifty seats. So yeah. yeah, so yeah, so don't think you can walk in there and it'd be forty nine, fifty people, and you think you're gonna be the fifty first. Nope, yep. you got to get a ticket. That's right. So. We got right. the library strict. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 
Thank you so much, Gorman. Thank you so much. Talking to you. We will see you next uh, next Thursday night. No, next yes. Friday night. Whatever you night shall, it is. You shall. You <laughs> shall. Whatever night it is, I'll be there. <laughs> I got so many movies. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Babs. Thank you so much. Take good care. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> okay, Harry, where we at? I know you're around somewhere. All right. Uh oh, Harry the Bandit. So, um, Gorman is signing off, and uh, we're signing off. And uh, I'm excited about the uh, film festival this year, as I am always every year, because eight years in. Okay, Harry, let's call it a day. All right, then. I don't know if we have guests tomorrow. I don't think so. Nope. Well, tomorrow I won't be in the studio, so. I know. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Okay. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Bandit Harry. (laughs) <laughs> Patriot Bandit. <laughs> Hi, this is Bad Soul Vibe from New Haven, Connecticut, and you're listening to WNHHLP 103.5 FM, streaming live at New